Hey, this is Sarah Abbott on board Exit Only, and today we're going to do a quick rundown of our medical kit. I believe that every boat that's out there really should have some form of a medical kit, whether you're a coastal cruiser or planning to do a circumnavigation. Here on Exit Only, we actually have two medical professionals on board. We have Captain Dave, who is an MD, and I am a physician's assistant who's been working in the emergency room now for 15 years. So we have a lot of experience under our belt. We opted to go ahead and put together our own medical kit, but there are a lot of companies that are out there that actually will put a kit together for you um, that really will meet all of your needs. So our kit really is tailored to our level of medical expertise. Uh, there are some things that are in there that a layperson really uh, wouldn't be trained to use, but we've kind of included some goodies in there that we wanted to have on board. One of the first things I did putting together this kit was one, we got a, a bag that was big enough just to kind of hold everything together. It's a big bag that looks like something that an EMT would use. It's nice and bright orange so that we can just go and grab it and see it quickly. Now I found this bad boy on Amazon. Um, it really wasn't that expensive and so far it's worked out great for us. I think every medical kit probably should have um, this basic medical equipment on board. Number one is a good stethoscope. This is the one I've had for several years who brought that. Trauma shears. So if you have somebody that is injured and you need to get clothing off of them, um, this is something that will cut right through that. Also great for cutting up bandages and that sort of thing. Blood pressure cuff, very important thing to have to get your vital signs to know whether or not that person has a good blood pressure. That can give you a lot of information about what's going on with their body. Finally, we have this little pulse oximeter right here. And this is just to help me tell how well somebody is oxygenating. Put it on the finger and then it'll tell us what their heart rate and their oxygen level is. Let's say hypothetically someone on board got really sick and they were having a lot of vomiting or diarrhea. They couldn't tolerate oral fluids and they got really dehydrated. What I would want to go ahead and do is put an IV in that person and give them some IV fluids. I got some IV start kits here that have everything from the catheters and the tubing, um, the flushes, all that sort of stuff. And we went ahead and we brought along with us, again, for hydration purposes, if absolutely necessary, we can give some people some normal saline. So the next place that we kind of uh, break things down into is going into ear, nose, and throat. Um, of course, on a boat, it's always possible someone can have an eye injury, an ear infection, something to do with the throat. So we have that bag together in this nifty little kit right here for nosebleeds, nasal clamps. If necessary, we have something here that can help to open up the nose. If I did have someone with a really bad nosebleed, okay, I could actually pack it. This is something called a rhino rocket, and you put that up the nose to help pack a, a bad nosebleed. We have a mouth shield equipment to be able to look at teeth in the mouth if someone had a dental injury. An otoscope okay, to look in someone's ear. Somebody gets an ear infection, okay, we can go ahead and take a peek in there and see what's going on with the, with the ear. Dental wax here, okay, this has to do with, again, dental injury, if we needed to cover something up that was chipped or broken. A couple of eye shields, say somebody had a significant eye injury, you wanted to protect that, cover up with that, take that on, and then also have some medication I can use to numb up the eye if I need it. Ear curettes, and that can sometimes be good to get a, a foreign body out of the ear. The next thing that we did is that we broke down our medical kit into different parts of the body as they would be injured as we'd have to deal with them. So the first part that we have over here is what we call as airway, having to do with the lungs, with breathing, that sort of thing. And we have a couple different things here. Probably wouldn't find it in a typical medical kit, but again, because of our level of medical expertise, we opted to go ahead and throw some stuff in. One of the first things we have here is this is something called an Ambu bag. And so if I had somebody that wasn't breathing well or if I had to ventilate them, I could go ahead and put this over their mouth and then squeeze on the bag just to help to oxygenate them. If somebody was incapacitated and not breathing their airway, not protecting their airway, we have these little bad boys right here. Again, I bought these on Amazon. You don't need a medical license to get this, but this is something that slips in the mouth, helps to hold the tongue uh, back and keep that airway open. And then we have what's called a nasopharyngeal airway. So this is a 
flexible, flexible tube that would go in someone's nose and back, okay? Again, just to help to maintain the airway. Then I do have some, some things here in the kit that have to do with intubation. So if I did really have someone that was seriously injured that wasn't breathing, if we had someone with a cardiac or respiratory arrest, I do have the capability of intubating that person, putting a tube down into their throat and, and ventilating them, keep, keep them breathing. Uh, the other thing we have in our kit, which I wouldn't expect that a typical medical kit would have, is actually a chest tube tray. So in the event that we had a crew member that had a severe chest injury where there was a collapsed lung, we have the necessary equipment actually to put a tube into their chest to help reinflate the lung. More on the trauma side of things, okay, to be prepared if somebody has an injury, a wound on a boat. As we already know with Captain Dave, it's easy to trip and fall and hurt yourself. And so that sort of thing um, is fairly common on a boat. So we have a couple of different things to help us in that respect. Instant ice packs, okay? If somebody falls and bumps their head and has a swollen area or sprained ankle, we have some ice packs we can get on there. In the event that we do have someone with a significant wound with a lot of bleeding, I would highly recommend that people look into getting this. I actually found this on, on Amazon. You can actually put what's called quick clot um, into a wound that is bleeding heavily helps to slow down the bleeding. So we have a couple different things here that we could use for orthopedic injuries. Finger splints, wrist splints, ace wraps. We have something called the Sam splint. Got this one on Amazon, okay? And with this, you can make a temporary splint if somebody has a, a, a fracture or a bad sprain just to help to immobilize the injury. A wrap for a knee, fling. What else do we have in here? Different types of athletic tapes and things in there that we could use to wrap up joints if there was an injury of that sort. A hard cervical collar. So if I did have somebody that fell from a height um, and was having neck pain, we'd probably go ahead and put this on them just to help to stabilize the neck until it could be assessed a little better. Next, we're gonna get into wound care. So if I had somebody on the boat that had a laceration or an abscess, something that needed to be cleaned up, sewed up, we can do that. Sterile laceration trays. We have some sutures. We have the lidocaine, the anesthetic needed to sew, sew all that up. In this kit, we have everything from the little dressings that we would need to um, just the materials to take care of a wound to dress it. And the final thing, which was just an option for us, which I thought might be smart, when you get people of a certain age on the boat, this is a Foley catheter tray. <laughs> so just in case, <laughs> just in case somebody had some bad urinary retention, we could take care of that. But this can also be used uh, for some other things, including a very bad nosebleed. This is our little medical kit right here. I feel pretty comfortable with uh, what we've included on it. We haven't really talked about any of the medications that we have on board, but again, I do wanna stress that this is a medical kit that we made on our own based on our uh, level of medical experience and training. We have an MD and a PA on the boat. So I hope this has been helpful. And if you have any questions, I hope that you'll shoot one our way. Thanks so much for watching. So Dr. Joss and Dr. Zoe, you want to show us what's in your medical kit? Uh-huh. Yeah. Microscopic. A back massage. A back massage. Try it on my hand. Oh. And a thermometer. A thermometer? What does a thermometer do? Oh man, that looks really serious. We got the shots of doom. Shots of doom? That sounds terrifying. Ow, ooh, ow, ooh, ow. So many shots! <laughs> wow! We got the bandage. Of the bandage? Doom. Okay, let's practice the bandage. Did you do? Oh, <laughs> that's my it's a meter. Oh! <gasps> Try the musket scope. So, I'll show you. Woo! Oh. <laughs> I hate the movie. Where did you go to medical school? <laughs> Doctors, I just wanted to say thank you for showing me everything in your boat med kit. I think it was very interesting and I think people probably learned a lot that they didn't know today about medicine and the ocean.